now you know I'm into crazy things. I do crazy things and <laughs> I put other things to the test, but not intentionally uh, in the first place. And so on, on Christmas Eve, um, our landlord came over to like wish us a Merry Christmas and he gave us a bottle of wine like he does every year and he gave us some chocolates and a tangerine, one single tangerine. So I gave the wine to my mother and I put the chocolates away to give them to friends when they come over for coffee or something like that. And um, I didn't know what to do with the tangerine. Sabina, how did you find carnival? So to be honest, it was like pure coincidence. Um, I was put on sick leave in August 2023. And I'll come back to this later, why that happened. And I quickly got bored sitting around at home and I started crochet, I started painting, but I also spent a lot of time on YouTube. And I had, for whatever reason, developed a preference for competitive eating videos. I know that's weird, but um, yeah, whatever. Um, so when you're watching videos on YouTube, you always get this list of related videos on the side. And um, what I did was like watch a video and then pick the next from the list and go on like this all day. And at some point, a video about diabetes and metabolic health just popped up on my list, which kind of makes sense in that context, I think. <laughs> and yeah, as I had always been interested in medicine and um, physiology, I decided to take a look at this and more videos came popping up on my list. And um, yeah, they were like about health, especially about diabetes. And one of those videos was an episode of um, the reversed TV series. I don't know if you have seen that, but um, yeah. So I decided to to watch this, and then I really liked it. And I found that there was another season, and even a third one. And the third season is about keto carnivore. And after I had watched the whole season. I just wanted to know more about this carnivore way of eating. And at this point, I'd like to mention that I got diagnosed with ADHD at the age of 37. So I'm 40 years old by now. And one of the things that ADHD folks do is really hyper focus on certain topics. Can be anything. So when I pick up like a tiny bit of information that's interesting to me, I'm like, okay, I need to know everything about it. And like, just like stop the world from turning. I'm on a mission. I need to. <laughs> yeah. And so, so that's what I did. And I searched YouTube for the doctors and the coaches that I had seen on Reversed. And so I found their channels like Anthony Chafee, I found Ken Berry, Robert Kiltz, um, Bella the Steak and Butter Girl, and Maria Emmerich. And then I get like from one to another. And I found um, Sean Baker, Tony Hampton, Kelly Hogan, Kerry Mann, um, Bill from Alaska, I love Bill. <laughs> five minute body and uh, the fabulous Bart K, of course, and um, your channel, yes. <laughs> and so two weeks later, I was hooked on carnivore. And I told my husband that, yeah, I, I told him everything I knew about it and that I wanted to try it, like just for the fun, you know. I didn't have like anything 
in mind that would happen to me. I just wanted to see how it feels like. And yeah, my husband was like, okay, so just meet and X. Well, where do I sign? I want to do this. <laughs> so we started this together, um, like all in on, I think it was September the 12th of 2023. So as I mentioned before, I was uh, put on sick leave at the end of August. And I had just started a new job on the 1st of August. So I was like four weeks in. And, um, you know, I had been laid off in a very ugly way um, at the end of June. And I had decided to like not let this layoff get to me, but to just keep going and to jump ship and take revenge kind of that uh, thing. And, you know, I'm, I'm a driving instructor and I went straight to the other driving school, um, like the number one comp competing driving school in town. And yeah, they, they hired me right off the bat. And I, I just wanted to like work my ass off to finish off my former employer. Yeah. And that is, it's just not me. Something was, was off with me. I, it's not the way I think, but yeah, mm, it, it didn't work out so well for me, obviously. Um, although the new job is, is great. I, my, my boss, my colleagues, I love them. They are amazing. Um, However, I had to deal with crippling anxiety every single day. And now I think I have to go, uh, go back a little further without breaking the mold, hopefully. Um, so I have suffered from depression, from anxiety and panic attacks, like all my life. I remember being depressed as a four-year-old, um, lying in my bed at night, um, crying and sobbing. And my mother was sitting at my side and she asked me, why are you crying? What happened? What can I do to help you? And I said, I don't know why I'm crying, but I just can't stop. So this was four-year-old me. And at the age of 19, I was seeing my first therapist and he sent me to a psychiatrist who put me on medication. And I was on medications for over 20 years, like on and off medication. And sometimes I had three different ones at a time, usually like two for daytime and one for nighttime because the daytime medication gave me sleep issues. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what they do. So when you have side effects, they just put you on another medications to treat the side effects. Yeah. Um, well, I, I've had several therapists and different kinds of therapy and I was hospitalized but nothing ever really helped me like long-term solutions. Um, so my life was pretty much all about dragging myself through every single day for as long as I could until I'd run out of energy and depression hit and I was put on another sick leave to kind of recover and gain back some energy to go for another round. So I really, I really learned to push myself and to think I was just being weak or lazy and essentially a bad person, like a burden for everyone around me. So 
When I was at my therapist's at the end of August, when I was put on the other sick leave, I just told him that I was anxious and having panic attacks every day and that I had a hard time falling asleep at night. Although every everything was fine, right? I mean, okay, I had been laid off, and but I just got myself another job and everybody was nice at work and I was doing fine. And so obviously those feelings I have just don't match the situation. So how do I get rid of them? Yeah. And I got my therapist for more than, more than three years now. And I love him. He's great. He knows me really good. And he just looked back at me and said, well, I'm pretty sure you know damn well what's going on and why those feelings are like so intense and persistent. And don't you? <laughs> well, yes, I did. But I didn't want to like admit to them. So I said, would you please tell me anyway? Because I think I, I really need to hear the words. So he told me that I had to make a decision now. And, you know, that I was exhausted. I had been working up to 15-hour days for about one year straight in the job that I had before. And I had not given myself permission to actually mourn the job that was taken from me before. And um, so, yes, I was, I was exhausted. I needed to, I needed to heal from all of this. And that's what my, my psyche, my soul just wanted to tell me. And it was using my body as a means to do so. And um, he said that if I refused to listen, it would find another way to get what it needs. And um, this might be as bad as a heart attack or a stroke. <laughs> so I sat there like thunderstruck. I, well, those, those had not been the words I wanted to hear, of course. But I think those were the words I needed to hear. So I did something I'm very proud of today, because so, I wasn't able to do that before. But I went to my physician on the same day, and she put me on sick leave which I'm still on by now. I'm still on sick leave. So now fast forward to getting started on carnivore. As I said, we just went all in. I, I wouldn't recommend that, but anyway. <laughs> um, so I bought some of those, you know, those urine keto strips uh, to monitor my way into ketosis. And um, I was lucky to only have very mild keto flu symptoms. Like I had a little diarrhea at the very beginning, but it just went back to normal within a, th a few days. And then I was had like two or three days of fatigue and low energy, but that's it. So very mild symptoms. And then about three weeks in, I kind of, yeah, I was, I was doing great actually, but I kind of talked myself into going off the track. Um, you know, I really, I really missed the veggies. Um, I, I missed this, this, I don't know, refreshing, crunchy feeling in my mouth, you know. And um, so I started having some of these for like three weeks. And I also had Greek yogurt and berries like for breakfast. So 
nothing too bad, I think. Um, and still I was watching carnivore content on YouTube every day. And at some point I was like, what am I actually doing here? For usually I am like an all or nothing personality type, you know, and uh, this was just, it just didn't, didn't fit me. Yeah. It was like, okay, either go carnivore or just leave it, but that's <laughs> no. Um, so I went back to, I would say 95% carnivore. So I still have one or two cups of coffee a day and I have tea um, I only have tea like in the winter, so I stop drinking it as it gets warmer outside, like naturally. Um, so maybe I can just not start having tea again next winter. <laughs> um, sometimes I put um, seasonings on my meat, like powdered bell pepper or garlic, um, but most times I just to salt only and I have a small piece of 90% chocolate occasionally like maybe three times a week and it's not even sweet it's it's quite bitter but I enjoy the chocolatey taste you know um so another three or four weeks in I noticed that I didn't have brain fog anymore um, some of my ADHD symptoms had improved a lot. I was able to focus a lot better than before. Um, for example, when I did uh, crochet, I could count the stitches I did while listening to a podcast. It was impossible to do for me. I was just always like stop the podcast and then go back and count the stitches and then write down and listen to the podcast. But I could just do it simultaneously. It wasn't possible before. And um, I was walking into rooms going, okay, what the F did I actually come here for? And I know this, this happens to all of us, right? But it happened to me like, several times every day and now it's like maybe once a week this just doesn't happen anymore um so now i i feel like i'm on on adhd medication 24 7 but in a good way so without the side effects <laughs> um so like another week later, I noticed that I did not feel depressed or anxious anymore. And I just recently mm, tried to put it to the test um, because I just couldn't believe this was happening. This was like all my life was, was always about being depressed, being anxious, and now it's just not happening anymore. No way. Um, so I did something crazy. I started thinking depressive thoughts, like intentionally. And what usually would happen was that they would make me spiral. And I couldn't even hold on to those thoughts. It just it felt like my brain just swept them aside, like, no, it's not good for us. Just don't go there. Yeah. And so I thought, well, okay, let's try anxiety. <laughs> um, and there are some thoughts and situations um, that would trigger my anxiety. But my brain was, okay, I know where you're trying to go. But guess what? I'm not going there. Try to go without me. Good luck. Yeah. So just impossible to to be anxious like it was i was having like a very very slight layer of anxiety like this tingling feeling you get and then it just went away it just now i can't trigger it anymore it's gone so well yeah now you know i'm into crazy 
things. I do crazy things and I put other things to the test, but not intentionally uh, in the first place. And so on, on Christmas Eve, um, our landlord came over to like wish us a Merry Christmas and he gave us a bottle of wine like he does every year and he gave us some chocolates and a tangerine, one single tangerine. So I gave the wine to my mother and I put the chocolates away to give them to friends when they come over for coffee or something like that. And um, I didn't know what to do with the tangerine. So I didn't want it to go bad. It's still food, right? And um, I didn't want to give it to some random person because I think that's weird. Like, I got a tangerine. You want my tangerine? <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. So, well, I decided to eat it. Um, I thought, well, I was doing so good and I deserve a little treat and this tiny tangerine wouldn't kill me, right? So when I woke up the next morning, I found that I was right. It didn't kill me, but I can tell you it tried. It tried really hard. Um, I had the worst brain fog and I was depressed, like full-blown depression, as deep and dark as it gets, all the way down to even suicidal thoughts. It, it, it was horrible. And thankfully, I started getting better um, the next day. And I just, I just couldn't believe a tangerine had done this to me, you know. They are sweet little orange thingies and they are evil. <laughs> and um, so a, a few days later, um, I was grocery shopping and I bought some bananas for my daughter. I have a 11 year old daughter. And so one last time craziness kicked and um, I was up for another test. I was like, okay, I'm just going to have one banana and I want to see what happens. <laughs> well, long story short, bananas are just as evil as tangerines are. Um, so I, I'm, I'm not ha ever having a piece of fruit in my life ever again. Just not, not for me. Um, so I'm back on carnivore ever since. And... I never felt better in my life. Um, you know, some people say they feel like they are in their 20s again. But I don't even feel anywhere near to this when I was in my 20s. In fact, I, I felt like crap when I was, <laughs> when I was in my 20s. I'm not going back there. Um, so... Carrie Mann, he says that I feel like a proper human being. And I go with that. And I want to add that I feel like I was existing before carnivore. And now I finally feel alive for the first time. Congratulations. Thank you. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. So, and... Like you're completely, completely med free now. I am off of all my medications now. Yeah, and I it took a it took a while to go off the sleep medications, or it wasn't it wasn't really sleep medication, actual sleep medication, but it was like antidepressant, but a calming, soothing one. So it took quite a while, but I made it, and I sleep like a baby. And I'm off of all the other medications right now. Yeah. yeah. That's fantastic. And so is your your husband still joining you with this? He is. He is. Yeah. Wow. Um, he pushed all the way through. He didn't have any breaks uh, like I did. He didn't miss the veggies, not at all. And um, yeah, he's still on it. And he also has quite some benefits, um, not as much as I have, but um, he didn't have 
like a lot to heal in the first place. Um, but he lost some weight. He didn't have anything to lose, but still he did. Um, and he has, yeah, also has a lot better, better focus. And, um, you know, my husband is a workaholic. My husband has like one, his main job, and then he has four, uh, two, two companies on the side. So um, he's like twenty four seven working, and he's he's, he's a machine. <laughs> he's just working and and eat eat sleep work repeat yeah kind of like that. And he's doing great. He's great doing great. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so how are you eating day to day? Well, I usually do two meals a day. Um, my first meal is like 12 or 1 p.m. Um, and then I, I would go and have um, two, two burger patties, um, like 100 gram each. And I just put it into my air fryer and eight minutes later, I'm good to go. And when I'm really hungry, I'll have like fried egg with that or put some cheese on it. Um, but most of the days I'm just good with um, two burger patties for like breakfast, late breakfast. And um, then my husband and I, go, we, we just have dinner at around six o'clock in the evening. And we just cook up some meat. Um, today we had a chicken liver. Um, so we're doing liver like once a month. Um, we just, we just like the taste of it. And, um, we're having, we always put, um, a block of butter on the table with it. And usually we are like through half a block of butter, which is one stick of butter, um, with one dinner. And we, we just, uh, do all the meat that we like. So sometimes it's, it's a very, very much it's, it's beef. And we, sometimes we like to do pork or chicken, uh, venison, whatever we can get our hands on. And, um, yeah, just open up the fridge and like, okay, what animal goes today? <laughs> what are we going to have? And, oh, look, pork today. And, that's it. And um, how how has your daughter been with this? Is she basically joining you or are, are you having to kind of cook separately for her? <laughs> um, so my daughter lives with her dad uh, for most of the time and her dad and she, they are living in Switzerland. So I'm seeing my daughter like four to five times a year. Um, then usually when she's, uh, if she has holidays then she comes to my place and is here for like a week or two. And she was here on like Christmas and New Year's and yeah, I know she, she didn't want to join me. She, I think she, she thought it was weird and crazy and like all the meat, you know, so, and she, she, you know, she started asking me, um, like every single day, mom, what you going to have for dinner? And I was meat. Oh, meat. That's new. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, no, I, I think she's making, she's making fun of it and uh, maybe, maybe I, I'll conv convince her in the future, but not yet. Uh, it's just amazing that, you know, so the, you've suffered with this your whole life, the mm. depression, the anxiety um adhd everything and it's all just just by changing the way you eat it's all just wiped away yeah and you know mm. i i want to make clear that i don't think that i'm cured you know it's just maybe but how do i know it's just i know just that i feel amazing that i i've never been on any medication that has made me feel this way or anywhere near so maybe i'll i'll have to go through another depressive episode maybe i will suffer anxiety in the future i don't know but 
I don't even want to think about it right now. I just feel too good. <laughs> it's I mean your your story is very interesting for me because I've I've watched documentaries in the past about you know things like depression and um, ADHD and people that suffered a long time and they finally get on some medication that makes them feel like wow I you know. I wish I'd found this earlier, you know, because now I can think more clearly and, and things like that. I mean, does it feel a bit like that for you with, with the way you're eating now? It's just like, I wish I'd, I just wish I'd found this earlier. Yes, very much. So, um, some people say that taking, um, antidepressants was like putting on glasses like you you couldn't see very good before but you didn't notice it and then you put on your glasses and go like wow wow what's happening to me and i never had that with any medication and now yes now it's just like that and um i didn't i didn't expect it to be like that you know and it was just like okay i'm not depressed anymore i'm not anxious i don't feel like it anymore and and then I tested it. I just wanted to know, can I like go back to this? And it just doesn't work anymore. And so, yes, of course, sometimes I think, well, what would have been if I had, yeah, found carnivore earlier, maybe there, there it was, I wouldn't have to go through all this pain and suffering, but yeah, well, I, I can't change it right now. And so I just enjoy the feeling I have and all all of the other benefits I've got from from, from carnivore. So, I mean, um, besides all of, of those um, amazing things, it I had, you know, some some weight loss. I I didn't have like a lot to lose in the first place, but still I'm at, I'm like four foot I'm five, five foot four, and I started at 148 pounds, and now I'm down to 134. So I'm down 14 pounds, and and in fact, I just I didn't lose any weight until about New Year, and then I just dropped 14 pounds in like three weeks. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but my body just wanted to get rid of some extra fluff. I don't know. Um, I don't have bloating anymore. You know, I, I used to have a food baby in the evenings, um, like <laughs> sitting on the couch and looking down on my belly. And it was like, okay, six months uh, pregnant. And um, now I have I have like a super flat stomach. When I lay on my back, I sometimes look down and I'm like, okay, this looks like a hammock. <laughs> you know, it's just <laughs> super flat. And and I just, I don't feel my digestion anymore. It's like nothing. And it feels like just light and free and yeah, amazing. And I I had, well, now we're, we're down that road now uh, talking about bloating. Um, so I had, I had hemorrhoids, like from giving birth to my daughter. And they've been quite painful for the last three or four years. I was actually thinking about having surgery on them. And now they are gone. It's like, you know, usually people say that it's impossible for when hemorrhoids like come out of the body to go back. It's just like when it, once they are out, you have to have them surgically removed. No, they can go back. They are gone. It's just gone. Um, my skin is so much better, like on my body, but especially in my face. I have, I mean, I think you can see it. I have got some quite, quite some color discoloration from the sun on my face. And it was worse. It was way worse. It's like just fading away. Um, Actually, my my uh, my sister in law she came to me on Christmas Eve and she she was like, "Okay, what are you 
doing? What happened to you? You look awesome. <laughs> and she, 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 um, she asked permission to touch my cheek. She wanted to feel it. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, my, my skin is a lot better, obviously. And um, I don't know if you ever heard of butter boobs. I heard uh, butter boobs. Yeah, um, I love that term. I heard um, Rina from Five Minute Body talk to uh, Dr. Elizabeth Bright, and they talked about butter boobs, and it's basically boobs aging backwards. So, I mean, I breastfed my daughter for three years, and you could. You could tell by my boobs, yeah. You know, they were not like bad, but you could tell they had a life before. And um it it just seems like my body is is taking like subcutaneous fat from all places and some of it's shedding some and it's putting some into other areas. So it's just a side effect, but it's amazing. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Um, wow, I, I, that that's an awesome term. I I hadn't heard that. Butter yeah, boobs. it's great, <laughs> butter boobs, and it it yeah, it's it, it fits. Um, so, um, I I saw one of your videos. You you put it on recently with uh, Bernadette. I think her name was Bernadette from Hungary, and um, she said that she um got rid of constant throat clearing and when I heard that I was like I have that too um so before carnivore I was constantly doing <clears throat> all the time like when when I was talking to people and then I was listening for a while and then I wanted to answer again and I was like because <clears throat> I knew that if I didn't do that my voice would crack and I would sound weird. And it's just, I don't do that anymore. I just, there's no, no, like no mucus in my throat anymore and in my nose. So it's just nothing in there. <laughs> and um, another thing is I went to my hairdressers um, two weeks ago and he said that I have quite a lot of baby hair growing in especially here i think maybe you can see, even see it here so i was like like bold up up here and um yeah, no my hair seems to be growing in again and um i always had a lot of tension in my jaw my dentist even wanted to like do retainers for me to keep me from from i'm, I'm not grinding my teeth but i was always like pressing my teeth and um I don't do that anymore you know sometimes in the morning when I woke up I was barely able to open my mouth because it was all cramped up and no nope, not not doing that anymore and sometimes when I when you wake up and you have been lying in your bed in a weird way like crooked up position and you got this stiff neck you know oh um, when I have this, it's like a matter of, okay, let's do a stretch. And two hours later, I can't feel it anymore. And before that, it was like a three day procedure to <laughs> open that up again. And it's just, um, seems like my muscles, um, just release tension when there is no tension needed. And, um, just last weekend, I uh, found another thing, um, and it's about my eyesight. So I wear glasses for driving. I have like a note in my driving license saying that I need to wear glasses or contacts um, for driving. So I don't need them for, for reading, just for long distance. Um, yeah. So... Last weekend, my husband and I went to a, like a wildlife park just around the corner here. And we went to the fox enclosure for they were announcing that they would feed the foxes. And I wanted to see that. 
And one of the foxes uh, started running around in the enclosure and I noticed that he was limping. He was holding his paw up and just didn't want it to, to touch the ground. And we were wondering what's, what was happening. And then I noticed that they had put a note on to the fence of the enclosure. And I was turning to my husband and said, look, they, they put a note there. They are telling the whole story, why he's limping and, and what happened. And so my husband was like, okay, what does it say? And I read the whole thing to him. It was like 10 feet away. And I read the whole thing. And then I was like, so you can't read it? And he's, no, no, I can't read it. I would need to go closer to that. And, you know, my husband wears glasses all the time. And he had just got a new pair of glasses like half a year ago. So they are good for him. He can read it. They are great, but he just couldn't read it. And I was like, okay, so why can I? Why can I read it without glasses when you can't read it with your glasses on? So something's going on there. I think I need to go see my, my optometrist um, for another pair of glasses or see if I can pass the eye test uh, without glasses. I don't know. Um, so, well, another thing is I didn't have the energy to do like physical exercise before. I knew that I should have done some exercise, especially being a driving instructor. So you're sitting in the car all day and you just wobble around and you should do something just for your back and neck. And But I just didn't have the energy. And now I signed up at the gym like last week. And um, as I said, I, I'm off of all my medications. And now I finally decided to go off my sick leave and go back to work by the 19th of February. So a lot of things going on. That's awesome. Yeah. So for, for someone watching this that hasn't, hasn't started doing carnivore, mm -hmm. All these things you're talking about related to depression, ADHD, your eyesight, weight loss, all of these kind of things. For someone that's never done this, listening to this, it seems like this is an overwhelming list of things. How is this mm -hmm. possible? What are you selling me? Mm -hmm. How can you explain how how can you explain it to someone who's thinking this is you're just trying to take advantage of me, you know. You, you're going to start. You're going to bring out a bottle of snake oil soon. Yeah. Um, so, well, I I I wouldn't believe it if it wasn't me experiencing it, you know. And I I really think that um, all all things that happen like physically, it's just a matter of nutrition, and um, that we just yeah, nurturing our bodies with uh, all the right stuff, with meat. Um, it's just doing all the physical um, things. And I think that the mental health um, things are, they are physical too. So, um, you know, I, I don't know if you, maybe you know Dr. Daniel Amen. He is um, he's American. Uh, he has, he has um, like, I don't know, nine clinics all around the country. And he's doing a lot of brain scans. And he doesn't use the name mental illness. Just he, talk, he, he calls it uh, brain health issues. And he also is a lot into nutrition and okay, he sells his own supplements, yeah. Um, but he always says, like, your brain is an organ and it's not like, you know, clouds in your head and something mysterious. It's just an organ. And it's, in fact, it's like 70% fat. <laughs> and um, having all the fat, all the good fat, like bioavailable stuff, 
and nurturing your brain will make your brain healthier and have your brain fire and um, just make it possible to actually access some areas of your brain you've never have had any access to. Like I, I have, the, sometimes I've got the feeling that I had been like in front of, of, of some doors in my brain. I was already, already seen, seeing the door, but I just couldn't open it up. And now I'm finally able to open up the door and go through the door. Like I, you know, half a year ago, I would never even have considered to do this interview. I would be like, okay, no, 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 no. What, what if I, if I struggle to find, to find words? What if I just say something really stupid? And now I'm like, okay, so what, 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 what's going to happen to, to happen to me? I'm just, you know, so many people just can't talk a single word in German. And I'm I, I'm not a native speaker, so I do it in English. In English, and so nobody's gonna be mad at me for like struggling and and making excuses for not knowing some words. So so what? So what? So I'm a lot more like laid back and relaxed, and I'm just like, okay, let's go for it. Maybe it's gonna turn out good, whatever it is. And um, yeah, I I think it's a lot about my brain working just just being able to work and it's not like miraculous and all of those things that that i'm experiencing all of those uh, benefits i have a lot of them are tiny like baby hair and um not cleaning clearing my throat a lot yeah it's tiny things but the huge things i think it's all about nutrition it's all about nurturing my body in the in the right way and putting the right stuff into it yeah yeah uh i think the the comments you made there about the being laid back back and you know being willing to just do the things now that that resonates with me it's like it, it's almost like it becomes like a superpower right and you go i don't, I don't care what's gonna happen i'll just give it a go yeah yeah, that's mm. it. That's uh, I think Carrie Mann says it a lot. Like you're feeling like su superhuman, and uh, mm. yeah, I feel like that too. I, I just I just dare to try things, and I was always like so self conscious. I was always worried about what other people might think of me. And okay, maybe maybe it's age. Maybe I'm just you know I turned forty, and now I'm like. Pfft. <laughs> whatever but no no it's i i feel so much more confident and um yeah it's amazing nice so um how is it in germany at the moment with um with getting meat and stuff is it expensive um is it more is it more difficult or more political to get it um, as, you know, plant-based ideas seem to be sweeping the world? Yeah, so um, prices have gone up a lot, but not only on the meats, it's just everything that's so expensive. And um, so, no, it's not, it's not like difficult to get meat. I'm, I just go grocery shopping like once a week and I um, take like a half an hour drive. I could buy it like in town five minutes from here, but I, we got um, a huge, huge shop. I think it's like almost like a Costco or something like that, um, but German version. And uh, they have a huge like area uh, with only meats it's just like a kind of war paradise there um so all the different cuts and stuff like that and i'm just i'm just going down the aisles and passing everything else and i'm like okay right to the meat and i'm just stocking my cart <laughs> like okay some of this some of that oh look they got like this on sale so i'm going to get three of those and i'm gonna freeze them and, and um 
yeah so um no it's not it's not 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 actually um like difficult to get uh sometimes you get you know the, the side eye when you're like standing uh, at the at the checkout and um having a cart like filled up with only meat and butter on top and heavy cream <laughs> the people are like okay what, what what's happening here um but well um no it's uh, yeah it's it's expensive it's every every week when i go shopping it's a little bit ouch <laughs> i don't want to i don't want to look <laughs> um but yeah we still can get it and i hope it's gonna be like that and not getting restricted or something like that it would be horrible <laughs> yeah so um Sabina, do you have um, some social media if people want to reach out to you? Yes. So um, I'm on Facebook and I recently joined your group on Facebook. Um, and I'm there by my full name. It's Sabine Ulig. Um, it's U-H-L-I-G. And I have Instagram, and I put uh, the my Instagram name down here. It's Cookie and my birthday. And well, I'm actually I'm planning on having my own YouTube channel, carnivore related YouTube channel. And I already I have the channel. It's Plant Free Me, like in one word, Plant Free Me. It's going to be German uh, channel. The channel exists, but there's nothing on it yet. Um, I have some footage like uh on my on my ipad but i have to like like put it together and make a video of it um yeah so that's how people can reach out to me nice well i'll link to those in the description and Great. sabina thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story today i really appreciate it yeah thank you for having me it's great to be here